Hey, my lip dance. Um, so I'm going to do another video. I'm, I'm actually, I want to do this video today. I want to do another video tomorrow, like a Bollywood video or something. So if you guys are interested in watching, you guys can. But I quickly want to make a roast. I, I, shit, it's been two roasts in a row. First I did the roast of Tristan Thompson. Now I need to do the roast on Jungle, whatever his name is, Jungle Boy, Jack Perry. So I'm going to get in that ass when it comes to Jack Perry. And I'm going to also get into Tony Khan's ass. Because at first... You know, when you see the headlines and stuff, the, when the news first came out that Punk got in a, in another fight backstage and something, something like they they really over exaggerated it, and I was I was just over it. Like I was just like, man, th what is wrong with Punk? Like, why does he keep getting into altercations with these people backstage? Like I was getting ready to actually drag Punk. I was gonna, this was actually gonna be a video about the roast of CM Punk, but honestly, I after I get after I got a little bit more information, I waited it out. And obviously, there's different stories going all over the place, but right now it's it's really really centering towards Jack Perry and his and his foolishness and his child childish behavior. I, I I changed it. I was like, uh uh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to drag Jack Perry, and I'm also gonna have to drag Tony Khan because at this point, I I just don't know what kind of boss Tony Khan is. Honestly, like somebody needs to explain. Like, what boss does this? What what even regular day bosses? aren't this pussy they're, they're not pussy like this like tony khan is a different kind of level of pussy and i'm gonna get into that towards the middle of this video but right now i need to drag the shit out of, out of um jungle boy jack perry okay i'm gonna get i'm gonna, I'm gonna get in that ass first of all I, you know <laughs> i don't know i feel like these new these new wrestlers nowadays like these fucking like you know markish kind of like Death match kind of like, oh, let's just go over the limit. Let's just do the wow, wow, wow. Let's just, let's just be fucking like, you know, superheroes. We could just go through anything. We can, we can go through buildings. We can go through fucking cement. We can go through this. We can go through that and we'll be okay. And it's just like, when you give these mofos a reality check, they want to get pissed. They want to get mad. They want to get upset. So from what I'm hearing, from what I've read, what I've, what I've, listen to and all this stuff jungle boys annoying ass was using real glass during his matches right and listen at the end of the day this is wrestling you know put some props in place you, you know you have the table plots um props you have the you know the thumbtacks all that stuff so this guy is telling well whatever going around because you know he does he's under contract with AEW he's he's saying like he wants to keep using real glass so apparently you know Tony Schiavone and some other people the upper management people were like listen like you can't we can't be having you use real glass because it's like you're gonna get hurt like you don't know what could happen like shit you can even die from that shit so it's like we don't want any of that to happen Jungle Boy apparently was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, and I'm I'm over exaggerating, but I'm basically trying to say like his 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 the way it's coming across. Jungle Boy definitely comes across as a fucking like, I don't give a shit. Like, fuck y'all. I'm gonna do what I want to do. Like one of those like teen. It's giving me like teenage behavior. Like I'm just gonna do what I want to do. I don't give a fuck if y'all don't like it. I'm a rebel. Da -da 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 -da. So he was making, he was giving the fingers to Tony Schiavone and all them other people. So I'm just like, okay, so he's already giving me man-child behavior. He's giving me man-child, you know, I don't know what the hell is going on. Just because you look like a fucking kid does not mean that you are a fucking kid. You're an adult, a grown adult, you know common sense. Why the fuck are you using real glass in your matches? Why are you using real glass in your matches when you know the consequences of that? You know the things that can happen. Freaking Goldberg, we can't even go to him. Back in the day, he was freaking punch. He punched the freaking car door with the fucking glass to the point where he popped the vein. He almost freaking died. He's he was banging his head on walls and shit, knocking himself out. And now you got this freaking man child teenage looking motherfucker trying to use real glass as if that isn't gonna cause the company to look in a bad light. And listen, I am not a fan of you. Y'all already know. AEW is a mess, and I talked about it previously in, you know, on the channel. You guys can go look at my Wrestling Talk podcast. I mean, Wrestling Talk um, playlist. I got the videos there, you know? So I'm just like, you need to listen. 
you know, you need to listen to the upper management and, and, and fucking use your common sense because I don't understand why, why, why would you want to use real, like, there's a quote from Jim Cornette. I forgot where he said this before. And listen, y'all already know Jim Cornette. I watch him. There are times I agree with him. There are times I don't, but I do agree with him when he said this. And I forgot where he said it at. He was like, listen, wrestling is already hard enough. Right, you know, you guys are taking bumps and stuff like that. Like, like even even the simplest bump, guys can freaking get, can pop a knee out, can pop their shoulders. Anything can happen. Injuries can happen. Wrestling is hard enough as it is. Why make it even harder? Okay, I remember Jim Cornet saying that. So I'm just like, Jungle Boy. If if your management, the people, you know, whatever. Are telling you to you need to ch- first of all not even chill out eh, take the glass out and you're not listening it's like at this point and you know I'm I'm also seeing things that Jungle Boy doesn't like to take advice from veterans he doesn't like to take advice from management or Tony Khan or anything he likes to go by the beat of his own drums bitch first of all you are not Pocahontas you are not giving me the colors of the wind talking about the beat of my own drum bitch. Last time I checked, you're under contract. You are under contract. So whatever I fucking say goes. And you know what's so crazy? The the way I'm saying it right now is the way Tony Khan should be saying it. But I just know Tony Khan is not saying it like how I'm saying it. But I'm going to get to Tony Khan's ass in in a second. But I didn't even drag Jungle Boy. If a veteran is giving you simple advice. Because at the end of the day, the veterans have... They did this before. Before you even came to the picture. Before you were even born. Okay? They did they, 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 they done this, did it. It's already it's 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 past them. Okay? So it's like if management is telling you stop using real fucking glass in your matches, stop using real fucking glass in your matches. Simple as that. I don't give a fuck how magical if you want to be using real glass and doing all that extra shit, leave the regular mainstream wrestling, go to one of them lucha wrestlings or the underground wrestlings to do we know death matches and all that stuff. Go do that. Go do that. Cuz they allow that over here. But the way AEW is trying to go and where they're trying to get to, they're trying to clean it up a little bit. So if they're telling you you bitch, you can't use real glass, then you can't use real glass. That's it, that's all. End of discussion. Like, he really tried, and he, honestly, he, Jungle Boy does give me the vibe that he don't give a fuck about nobody but himself, like, he's selfish and he don't care. Like, he gives me, like, you know, that, that one teenager where do you know that they haven't been disciplined in their life, you know, just spoiled and just fucking pops off at the mouth, but when he steps to the right, when someone, the right one steps up to him, he don't know what the fuck to do. So here's my thing, though. Since Jungle Boy wants to be using real glass, and in a way, I will say this, AEW has perpetuated a lot of bullshit too when it comes to their matches, you know, with the death match stuff and the, the cutting every, you know, John Moxley, oh my God, John Moxley's a whole other, he's a whole other conversation. But, you know, with the cutting and the, 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 the craziness that happens over there, in a way, they did perpetuate that shit. So they couldn't, they can't really be too, too surprised that someone like a, Jungle Boy wants to use real glass in his matches. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, girl, like, this is real glass. The the, the, the freaking trauma and the and the injuries that can happen with real glass is really, really like it's is real bad. So you need to take the you need to you need to listen. But since he wanna use real glass so goddamn badly, since he thinks he's fucking some fuck, I guess he's invincible. Okay, maybe he thinks he's invincible. Maybe Tony Khan AEW, one of them. Can write up a you know, a contract or I don't know what how do they call that where they sign it? We are not liable. You know that you know those kind of letters. We are, we are not liable if you get hurt by this glass. We are not liable if you die by this glass. <laughs> they need to have Jack Jungle Boy Jack Perry sign that shit so that if if he gets if he gets mollywopped by the glass, if he gets cut and sliced and diced like a motherfucking candy crush, if he gets sliced and diced. The company won't get sued. He needs to sign on the dotted line towards that end of that contract. Like, yeah, we're not gonna, you know, 
we are not liable for what happens to you, even though we told you, not, even though we told you a bitch ass, even though we told you a stupid ass, even though we told your fucking annoying hard headed ass that you can't use glass. But since you want to use it so bad, since you want to go against the authority and stuff like that, sign on the dotted line right here that we are not liable for what the, what the fuck happens to you. Bada bing, bada boom. Since he wants to get sliced and diced, I, we are not liable. Like, he is, like, when I was reading that, when I was hearing that, when I was doing my research, I'm like, this fucking insecure as annoying as he, like, you see, he seems the type that he won't have any fucking friends. Like, he doesn't have no real friends. Because it's like, if, if you had a real friend or, or some genuine family member, or family members that can't step up to him, maybe family members that, like, that were scared of him or something. Because if you had the real ones, the real ones would have told you better and would have taught you better. Like, he really, really tried that. So, in a way, I'm not going to hold you. I, like, when I first, so when I heard all of that and all that happened and, and I heard that, you know, they went and they ran to CM Punk to come and talk to Jack Perry, which I, I'm going to talk about it in a second. They ran to CM Punk and then Jack Perry still scuffed him off like, bitch, I don't give a fuck. And then Jack Perry spoke into the camera like a glass, oh, cry me, a whatever, blah, 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 blah. I was like, listen, he, he needed to get his eyes whipped. Like, bitch, we're caring about your health. Your health, your physical health. And yet, you want to get mad, you want to get pressed? So, when I first, so after I heard all of that and I read all of that, I was like, you know what? On a personal level, Punk was right. Punk was right to, sh whatever he did, shoved him, put him in a headlock. I honestly think Punk should have done more. He should have knocked his fucking ass out. But you know, Punk can't fight like that. It's no shit. It's no shade. Yeah, no punk. Listen, I will say this about punk, and I'm gonna talk about him in a second. It's no shade, but punk, punk knows who to step up to. Can we keep it a stack? Punk will never like. <laughs> punk can only do this to these AEW guys, cause these AEW guys, I don't know. They give me the vibe that they can't fight in real life. Like they can only do the wrestling stuff, but when it comes to this real life fighting stuff, they they don't got no hands. God damn, the young buck can't even make. It's like. <laughs> Now, Jack Perry, you had you had CM Punk's old eyes put you in a headlock? You know, they, they give me the vibe that they can't fight. So, I don't know. CM Punk gives me the type that he knows who to step up to. But if it was one of the WWE guys, it's no shade. And don't get me wrong. There's some Markish-looking WWE guys, too. But, like, it was WWE guys or the UFC guys or whatever. You know, Joe Rogan. You know, Joe Rogan has been talking shit about CM Punk for the longest. If it was one of those, CM Punk would never... Especially... Like a Joe Rogan, CM Punk would never step up to Joe Rogan. I don't even think CM Punk's ever said anything publicly about Joe Rogan because he would never step up to him because he knows who... To, CM Punk knows who to step up to. He knows the weak ones. So, and, and Jack, per, Jack Perry is clearly one of them because he can't fight. So, yeah, but, you know, Jack Perry definitely deserved it. He definitely deserved it. And I think that he should have got his ass whipped even more. Get the fuck out of here. You talk about, you're not going to... Oh, I want to use glass. Okay, bitch, if you're going to use glass, contract. We are not liable for what the fuck happens to you. I keep telling you a thousand times to stop using that freaking glass, but yet you want to continue? Fuck around and find out. <sighs> we got to talk about this clown. You know, I never seen a, the, a bigger mark, a bigger mark than Tony Khan. Okay, because this is also a rose for him. I don't understand how you had 81,000 people in London for your show. And yet the only thing that people are talking about is this incident with CM Punk and Jack Perry. And for me, I'm just like, this man, this man legit has no control of his company. He has no control of his company. He doesn't know what the fuck to do. He's such a mark. He's such a, like a bystander. He don't know what to do. He's like, oh, you know, and a wimp. And it's like, I'm, I'm also, I read something too, that apparently the fight took place in front of Tony Khan. Like, he was sitting right there when it happened. It's like, Tony... And I said this in a previous video. I'm like, Tony Khan, the way this man has led his wrestlers to run the asylum, girl. In a way, he's reaping what he sowed. I said this in a previous video. You guys can go look into my wrestling talk chat. Uh, my wrestling talk video on, on, the, on the playlist. I said it. I was like, why the fuck are... Why the fuck is Kenny Omega and, and the, the Young Bucks EVPs when they're still active wrestlers? Why? What experience do they have as EVPs? You know what I mean? 
Like why why do you have these wrestlers in your circle like that? When they're your they are your employees. There needs to be boundaries. And and there's clearly no boundaries. And why the fuck is there a fight happening every other and listen, don't get me wrong. A- am I saying that there hasn't been fights in wrestling before? Of course, of course. We all know that. Of course. But let me tell you something. And this is why, I, and I said it before in the previous video. I said, listen, one thing about Vince. If Vince was in his 90s prime, early 2000s prime, mid 2000s prime, Vince, whatever beef any wrestler had behind the scenes, Vince would have put that on the fucking show. And he's, he's going to tell y'all, y'all better make it into a storyline. Y'all better fight it out in the ring. I'm going to make some coin out of this. Okay? At least Vince had the, had the, the common sense to do that. This stupid idiot doesn't have the common sense to, first of all, when Punk came back, why the fuck didn't you capitalize off of the, 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 the media scrum thing and everything like that with, with Punk and Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, to get them in a room together. I don't give a fuck who don't want to see who. Because I'm hearing that all the Young Bucks don't want to see. I don't care. You are my employees. Put them in a room. Say that we're going to get some coin out of this. We're going to get some rating out of this. We're, gonna, we're about to get the casual fans to come and watch this. So y'all need to put your whatever personal feelings. I mean, y'all can still have your personal feelings, but we're going to bring it to the storylines. We're going to bring it to the ring. Let's make some money. You, you couldn't, he couldn't even do that. Tony Khan couldn't even do that. He was so scared of his EVPs. He was so scared about what CM Punk was going to say. He was so scared that he just left, you know, left the, the, the beast to just keep growing and growing and growing and growing. And now the shit is hitting the fan. It's been hitting the fan ever since. I talked about what CM Punk said about hanging Adam Page. And I, I already know I said that CM Punk was wrong for, for saying Adam Page's name and all that. Even though I understand it was off the air, that sort of thing. But still, I said that, you know, he should have left it alone. But in this situation, first of all, I'm a bit confused with, with this whole thing with Jack Perry and the glass thing too. Because I'm like, if why, why, why was there glass in the building to begin with? Why didn't y'all, like, first of all, Jack Perry can cry and whine all he wants to, but y'all should have been, Tony Khan should have been, should have had his people inspect the glass, saying that we're no longer going to be having real glass in this building, cars and all, bringing in the fake glass. Why, why didn't he do any of that? Why didn't he say any of that? Why didn't he inspect, have people inspect the glass? You know what I mean? It's like, why was the glass in the building to begin with? So I'm just like, unless Jack Perry brought the glass, from, like, did he bring it in the building and nobody said anything? Like, <sighs> and then it's just like you had CM Punk, your one of your employees putting your putting his hands on another one of your employees in front of your face. And I get it, you know they're suspended. I think they're saying CM Punk is suspended. Jack Perry is suspended. I I get that. I understand that. And honestly, they both deserve it. I'm going to talk about CM Punk in a second. But they both deserve it. But at this point, Tony Khan... And you know, they say, I, heard, I, also heard, I also read something, too, that said that when CM Punk first came back after the whole... After the nine months break and stuff, after the media scrum, like, before he went out to the ring, they said that Tony Khan was behind, like, behind Gorilla, screaming, like, CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk. And I was just like, oh, my God, this fucking Mark... This Mark, this Mark, this Mark. I've never seen a boss like him before in my life. This is so stupid. Like what? This is a this is a boss. No, sweetie, this is a fan. This is a fan. And listen, I know what y'all about to say. Y'all about to be like, oh, Ronnie, you know. But you know, uh, Vince McMahon was a fan of Shawn Michaels, though. You ain't saying nothing about that. First of all, complete. First of all. Because y'all like to do this whataboutism stuff. Last time I checked, Vince McMahon knew when to put the business first. That's number one. This, this, this man, this, he's another man child too, Tony Khan. This man child, Tony Khan, this Mark, he doesn't know when to put the business first. Vince McMahon knew that at the end of the day with Shawn Michaels, when he came to a certain point, he was beating a dead horse. He needed to move on to the, gold, to the golden goose, to the golden horse, which was Steve Austin. He knew that we we needed to move on from this situation because I'm not going to be dealing with it. 
He knew. And and you know what? What's another thing too? Vince McMahon also got his locker room in order. Tony Khan has never done. That's why, I, in a way, I don't really like y'all really comparing Vince McMahon to Tony Khan because I'm just like, bro, like it's they're two, two two totally different styles of how they do things. In a way, Vince, even as problematic as Vince is, Vince handles in a way in a way handles his locker room with more honor compared to. Um, Tony Khan. And I, that's a lot coming from me to say that about Vince McMahon. That's a lot. Especially talking about honor at times like this when he's accused of sexual, you know, misconduct or whatever. But you know what I mean. You know? So I, I don't even like y'all comparing that. So it's like, like for me, the fact that this guy is such a mark for the business and the mark for CM Punk and it's like, you're allowing your employees to put their hands on each other and you're just sitting, you're just, you don't, you don't know what the fuck to do. You, and, then, and here's another thing too. Why did Tony Khan, first of all, Tony Khan is the boss. He's the CEO of this company. Why is he having other people, Tony Trevani, all these other people talking about some, oh, don't bring glass, uh, you know, talking to Jungle Boy to the, to the point where they had to go to CM Punk who has the history of, of putting hands on people to come and talk to Jungle Boy on, on, on the boss's behalf? Are you serious? A man who has a history of putting his hands on people, a man who has a history of doing all that, and who just came back, not even nine, 10 months ago? You're gonna have him talk to Jungle Boy, who's also a freaking hothead? This is a recipe for a disaster. Why are other people doing Tony, Tony Schiavone, I mean, uh, Tony Khan's job for him? After Tony, Tony Schiavone and the other management people couldn't convince Jungle Boy to to not use glass. Tony uh, Tony Khan should have called Jungle Boy into his office, sat his stupid ass boy ass freaking annoying ass down, and be like, "Listen, we're not using no glass. If you're thinking about using glass, well, you're out of the show. Point blank period. We're not doing this today." That's what he should have said. But he didn't. He he allowed management to go to. CM Punk as if CM Punk is a locker room leader, which he isn't. And I'm going to get to that real quick. So Tony Khan is just, I don't know. I don't know how. He, he doesn't know how to operate as a boss. Like, he just does not know. And honestly, at this point, I'm not really at a point where I think that Tony Khan should step down. I think that he should step down as a CEO. I'm going to do a part two real quick, my Lipton's, and um, I'll be right back.